that just happen? And then I realized it was because I took, took a step back to use a, your term. I broadened my field of view, which allowed me to think more clearly because instead of being hyper-focused and narrowly focused, I broadened my range of vision. I t took a breath before I made my call, right? I had to take, my, take a, a nice breath to, to speak clearly. And I realized that taking a step back and detaching, I got to see infinitely more than even the most experienced guys in my platoon. And I started doing it all the time. And I started doing it in land warfare. I started doing it in urban combat. I started doing it in all these tactical training scenarios. These are just training. This is the 90s. I started doing these training scenarios. And it always allowed me to see what we needed to do. And then I started doing it like when I was having conversations with people. I'm having a conversation with my platoon chief. And I can see that he's starting to turn a little red in the face. And I, you know, we're, we're about to argue about something. I said, oh, wait a second. I'm taking a step back looking. Going, he's getting mad right now. And he's the platoon chief. Y you better just de-escalate this thing real quick. And I'd say, hey, you know what, chief? That sounds good. Let me go take a re let me go relook at the plan or whatever. And so I started to do this kind of with my normal life was to not get wrapped up in my own emotions, not get wrapped up in the, the, the gun fight that was happening right in front of my face, not to get wrapped up in the details of what was going on, but instead take a step back, detach, look around, and then you can make a be much, much better decision. And it's not, it's, it's exponential. You, if you're looking down the sights of your weapon and you take a step back, and you look around, it's exponential how much more you can see. Now, listen, if you are the only person in a gunfight, it's going to be harder for you to do that because you've got to be focused on whatever you're shooting at. But when you have 16 guys or 20 guys, they're all looking in the same direction. It's very easy to be the guy that goes, I'm going to take a step back, look around, make a call. So when you talk about the mechanics, when I teach this to people now, the mechanics of it, take a step back. Literally, you're at, you know, you and I are at a meeting. There's a bunch of people that starts to get a heated argument. I will literally push my chair back away from the table, change my perspective, perspective, open, widen my field of view. The other thing, the other thing, like on the in, in the SEAL teams, you don't want to you don't want to sound panicked on the radio for a couple reasons. Number one, because when you panic on the radio, it's going to cause other people to panic. Number two, if you panic on the radio and you sound panicked, everyone's going to make fun of you. So, you, you know, when you get back from the mission, everyone's going to go, away, yeah, man. you sounded like a baby out there. So what would I do before I would key up my radio? Take a breath. And so here I'm manually slowing down my breath. I'm broadening my field of view. So if you're in a meeting or you're in a you know, you're at the, at the supermarket parking lot and someone starts to yell at you. Take a step back. Take a breath. Broaden your field of view. Detach from those emotions that you're having. And make some space. And that's, that's how I go through the mechanics of detachment. Now, I can tell you right now, I mean, when, when, when you do this all the time, which I kind of do this all the time, I don't, I don't really have to like step back, but when you're starting to be able to try and do this, absolutely make a mechanic. And I'll tell you, here's another like weird little nuance thing. Lift your chin up and put your hands down. Now this is not not a combat situation, not a, not in a fight, but here's the thing. When, when, when I get defensive, what am I going to do? I'm going to raise my hands up and put my chin down. That's like a fighting mode. So if you and I are having a discussion and I'm starting to get heated and I'm starting to like, oh, he's not listening to me. Instead of me putting my chin down and, and put my hands like up, up to where I can put them in your face a little bit. No, I'm actually going to take a step back. I'm going to say, put my chin up. It changes my perspective a little bit more. It changes my visual perspective. Just by changing the angle of my head. Take a step back. Put my hands down. I'm not being in a defensive mood. I actually want to hear what you have to say. And if I start listening to what you have to say and not talking, it's very hard to be detached when you're talking. It's another key component. You want to detach? Shut your mouth. So I'm in meetings, you know, I'm in a bunch of different companies. I'm running, a, I have a bunch of, I own a bunch of different companies. I'm in a meeting in my companies. I'm not the one that's doing all the talking. In fact, I'm doing mostly listening. When I'm in task unit bruiser, my task unit, I'm not sitting there giving the entire brief. No, I'm letting the platoon chief and the platoon commanders give those briefs. 
And that way I'm detached. I'm listening to what they have to say. I'm more capable of seeing what holes there are in their plans by not moving my mouth, not talking. I'm listening. So those are some of the methodologies that I use and that I advise people to use in order to effectively start down the pathway of being able to detach in various scenarios.